Rodeo is America's original extreme sport. With its roots coming from the Old West, when ranch hands challenged each other for bragging rights on who was the best cowboy. Circuit cowboys were the weekend warriors of rodeo. Regular Joes with regular jobs. But come Friday, they pack up and head out to compete in circuit rodeos. Not only for paychecks, but for the same bragging rights that started years ago. Cascade Mountains to the west, where at the Deschutes County Fairgrounds is Rodeo Nation is pushing the barrier in Redmond, Oregon for the PRCA Dodge Columbia River Pro Rodeo Circuit Final. Hello again, everyone. I'm Wayne Brooks, and joining me is the 2004 World Champion Steer Wrestler Luke Branquino. Here we are at the Circuit Finals, and it's just like the playoffs in any other sport. The better you do here, the more you win, you get an opportunity to advance on for a bigger paycheck and hopefully a national title. That's right, Wayne. There's 12 circuits in professional rodeo. Each circuit sends a top two cowboys in their event to Pocatello to the Dodge National Circuit Finals. Now to get to Pocatello, you have to win the aggregate title in your event. To do that, fastest times in the timed events, highest scores in the rough stock. This will be the only way to determine who gets to go to Pocatello. Not all of the cowboys here are chasing a championship belt buckle. There's also a lot of money up for grabs. In order to get it, you've got to finish in the top four. That's the only way to fill your wallet. In the bareback riding, last night was electric. High scores and great rides. Here's the leaderboard coming at you. 83 points on top, Rowdy Bucker. Jason Sherman with a 77. Kirk Giovanini, 77. And Bobby Moat, the spurring machine with a 75. Let's take a look at the rules of the ride. You need to know what's going on. Here they come. Bareback riding is the most physically demanding of any rodeo event. The cowboy uses a bareback rigging, which has a suitcase type handle attached to a rigid leather body. The rigging and a required pad is placed on the horse just like a saddle near the horse's withers. The cowboy works his gloved hand in the rigging to get his proper and preferred grip, called the bind. When all is right, he nods his head to indicate that he's ready for the shoot dough. A successful ride is for an entire eight seconds, while the cowboy works to maintain body control and rhythmic spurring action atop an animal athlete that's determined to buck him off. A cowboy will receive a no score if he's bucked off before the eight second buzzer, touches the animal with his free hand, or fails to mark the horse out. All right, let's kick the tires and light the fires. It's time for some bareback riding. First man out, Bobby Moat, Culver, Oregon. Here's a world champion on a world champion horse. Yeah, Spring Fling from Big Ben Rodeo. Great horse, one, one horse of the year, and you know, three years, saddle bronc riding and the bareback riding. So that just goes to show you what an athlete this horse is. You know, the cowboy is one of my favorite in the world. Look at the feet, look at the action. Everything's right. Whoa, 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 whoa. What happened? Wow, I don't know. That's just an awesome horse right there. And I don't know if Bobby lost his bind, and, you know, on his rigging or what, but he had a double grab so he didn't land in the dirt. Holy cow. I hope we get to take another look at that. This this man is such an athlete. I could count on one hand in, in 10 years how many times I've seen him double grab. Yeah, exactly. Look how strong and powerful that little horse is. You know, that's not a very big horse, but I think Bobby just bind broke loose and kind of got out of position and had a double grab. That might have been, that might have been the problem as far as, as what we're talking about. You know, Bobby's a big guy. He's about six foot, six foot one, maybe 170, 180 pounds. And that horse is small, but really fast, really electric. Yeah, exactly. You know, but Bobby does a great job riding those kind of horse. I don't know what happened. You bet. Here comes Rowdy Buckner, Sandpoint, Idaho. We'll go from one end of the spectrum to the other when you're talking about the size of the contestant. 25 years young, little darling from Beard Rodeo Company. They raise so many of their horses, about 95% of them. This is a colt. This could be a little bit wild. Yeah, exactly. You know, Rowdy's done a great job this year. He's going to qualify for his first national finals. And right here, you can see why. Look how his toes are turned out. He's lifting on that rig, and he's ahead of that horse with his feet. That's He's making a great ride. There's a saying in the bucking horse industry, the money's in the main. He was placing his feet, his heels of his boots, right up in the neck of that horse. Judges are going to like that and reward him with a few more points. Yeah, exactly. 
<laughs> he about got kicked on the way off right there. <laughs> Jeez. Rowdy, your riding's great. Your get-off's horrible, bud. <laughs> and you can see when you watch this replay, look how his toes are turned out right there. You know, the judges really like to see that. You're in control of your body. You know, you're controlling your feet. It just makes the ride look so much better. Boy, that was a great job. Here comes the score. 77 points. That is nice. He's going to be happy with that. Yeah. you got to think about the aggregate. It's all about the aggregate. Exactly. That's going to put him 160 on two. He's got a great chance. Not bad. Smile, buddy. You're all right. Let's go to Jason Havens, Bend, Oregon. Jason's one of those kind of national finals rodeo quality guys that you just can't hurt this guy. He's got a mare that used to buck everybody off. This mare was bred at the barrel race. You know, one of the most consistent bareback riders in our game. When he went to the national finals before, he's placed in five out of 10 rounds. Look at this. He's strong, he's strong, he's going on, getting a little bit flopping there at the end, but nothing wrong with that. No day off with the horse. No, you know, Jason did a great job right there, and the judges are gonna mark that horse as well as they're gonna mark Jason. You can see the drop and the power she has in there just by the pull they're put, that he's putting on uh, Jason's arm right there. You bet. Let's take another look at it. Remember, we got a lot of first-time fans watching here. Remember, half of the score comes from the horse. You can be the greatest bareback rider in the world, but if your horse doesn't jump, kick, the higher they jump, the better they buck, the better you ride, the more you win. Exactly. And right here, look how good that horse is bucking. He's going to be a boatload of points right here. He's doing a great job, and that horse is really doing, it, doing her job, too. You know what? Look at those judges. They're smiling. I think this is going to be good. 80 points. Yeah. Awesome Nice ride. job, Jason. Nice job. Jason Femright, Stanwood, Washington, Spanish Tears from Beard Rodeo Company. This horse is no day off. No, this is a great horse. Um, you watch Buck, how athletic and how uh, how much speed this horse really has. Hopefully Jason get by her, but look right here. Ooh. Oh, wow. Ooh, ooh. To the right, you know, that horse really bucked out there and so quick and athletic. Just shows you um, how much these horses love their job. They need to rename that one Snake Stomper. That was no fun. Right turn, left turn. You know, some of these horses, whether it's a horse or a bull, they get smart. They can feel those guys. They know when they're in trouble and they'll uh, go the other direction. Yeah, exactly. They feel where the cowboy's weight is and, and you know, how to get them off. And this horse did a great job there. Man, look at him. He said, I don't want any more of that. I've had enough. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a great look at Jason Havens. 80 points. He's in the lead right now. He deserved every bit of that 80, too. Wow. Nicely done. Friends, stand by. More bareback riding coming up from Redmond, Oregon. Welcome back to the bareback riding here in Redmond, Oregon. Columbia River Circuit Finals. Dustin Mulroney, Pomeroy, Washington. This is a great big mare from Big Ben Rodeo Company. Yeah, it sure is. You know, and Dustin, he was 70 in his first one, so he has to get a chance at the aggregate right here if he can get this horse covered and be a lot of points on it. Ooh, you wouldn't want to mess around with her. Good, good. Everything's right. Looking good. He's trying to trying to get his feet down in there, but she's got so much power. This is a hard horse to make look good because if you stub your toes, she'll buck you off. Yeah, exactly. And like you said, Wayne, if you stub your toe, it's hard to get back in rhythm with these horses. And right there, you can see it. He had a little trouble. You bet. You know, I, I don't know that I'd be sticking my neck out too far to say she'll tip the scales at about 1,100. Uh, big mare, you put that much power on the end of one arm, you know, it's not like there's a saddle to help take a little bit of that jerk away. Yeah, exactly. You know, he did do a good job staying square, just his feet were having a little trouble. But, you know, they're going to mark him some points because this horse is bucking good and he, he kind of kept control. You, you know, bet. right here, I think 75 points. Hey, there that'll you go. work. That'll work. You put them together, 145 on two, good enough. Hey, he's, he's smiling. He's happy with it. He's got another horse <laughs> coming up. Lee Lance, Malala, Oregon. Now, savvy lady from Beard Rodeo Company. This is a hard horse right at the beginning of the ride. Everything has got to be perfect or she'll get you. Exactly. You know, he is 70 points also. He has to be 80 points to go to the lead in the go round. If he does that, he'll have a chance at the aggregate. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. There's some money here in the go round too. Everything looks good. And hey, he's, whoa, 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 whoa. Did you see that? Yeah, that horse kind of was moving there. And you know, he did a good job with his feet moving them. But uh, right, right there. oh, we got a yellow flag on the ground. Yeah, there's a flag, there's a flag. That mark out rule, you know, this is something a lot of folks don't think about. To give the horses the advantage, believe it or not, they're see him throw the flag. Oh yeah. You've got to mark the horses out, but there, I didn't see anything wrong on the right side. Here's the right. See where his feet is up above the shoulders in the neck of the horse. That's right where they want him. The right. Let's take a look at the left. Well, you know, the only thing I could think of is that judge might have seen his foot bounce the first uh, first jump out of the chute, which isn't allowed. You're supposed to hold him up there in the neck, and you know, they're going to give you him bet. no score. No score. The markout rule is critical. We're coming up with some rules. Let's take a look at that markout rule one more time. In bareback and saddle bronc riding, a rider can be disqualified if he doesn't mark the horse out. That means that his heels must be above the horse's shoulders until the animal's front feet hit the ground on its first move out of the chute. 
But if a horse fails to leave the chute, the judges can call out, go on, indicating that they have waived the markout rule for that rider on that particular horse. Luke, that first burst of energy out of the chute, that is a lot tougher than it looks. Yeah, to hold your feet up there is really tough, but a lot of people don't understand it helps set the ride up. You got to do it. Sean Culver, Grandview, Washington. Here's a national finals rodeo qualifying horse called Miss Smokeless from Flying Five. Now, he's needing some points. He was 73 in the first round. He's been a champion here before. Yes, yeah, Sean's a great cowboy, great rider, and a great guy. Look how he has his toes turned out. Uh, and just staying in control with those feet right there. Yeah, that yeah. Horse, you know, that horse kind of faded to the right and got Sean tipped off, but see how he regained control? You know, that's what being a cowboy is all about, never giving up and never quitting. Oh. And Sean did a great job. That guy is such an athlete. You know, you could wad him up and throw him out there 50 foot every ride and it wouldn't hurt him. No, he'd bounce back up and crawl, <laughs> crawl right back on another horse. <laughs> Look at the kick. Every jump just consistent with the kick. That is going to be some points right there. If he doesn't take over the lead, I'll be surprised. He does. 81 points. Nice job, Sean. You know, and Sean's proved it before. He's a national finals qualifier. He can ride great bucking horses. 81. Nice job. Jason Sherman, Washuga, Washington. Flying Five Rodeo Company, another great horse. Now, he's in a good position. He's 77 in the first round. If he could just tie that up, he's going to be in a great position for that aggregate and hopefully move on to Pocatello's Dodge National Circuit Finals. Yeah, exactly. You know, he tied for second with a 77 in the first round. He nods his head. See how his mark out was? He held his feet there really good. Look how this horse is really jumping and kicking. You know, he's doing a good job with his feet, and then the horse weakens there at the end of the ride, and it's really hard to get points. You know, as they leap, as they lunge and cover a lot of, a lot of ground, it, that's got to make it a little tougher to get your feet snapping back up into the neck. Well, exactly. Exactly, you know, and, and when they're leaping and lunging like that, it, it just it's a timing deal, and these guys have to get in rhythm with it. And then that horse kind of starts to run off there, but, you know, he did a good job holding his feet up there and, and riding that horse. You know, he's not going to be as many points as he wants, but he's going to have a chance with aggregate come the third go-around. All right, what are they going to do to him? What are they going to do? Here it comes, 73. That's a heartbreaker. He's a little disappointed over that. Jason, we got another round. Don't worry about it. Keep your chin up. Keep your head up. We'll do it again. Kirk Giovanini, Prineville, Oregon. Ghost Town from Beard Rodeo. Now here's a horse they've been in the high 80s on before. If he has the trip he normally has, this could take over the lead right here if he rides him right. Wow, look at here. That horse is really jumping and kicking, getting a lot of air underneath him. Look how he's got his feet turned out right there and really has control of him and, you know, pulling, lifting on his rigging. That's a great ride. Yeah, but you know what? I'm going to argue with you there a little bit. That's not the strongest trip I've ever seen that horse take. Watch about the fifth jump, four or five, right in here. He just kind of quit kicking quite as hard. They're going to dock that horse a couple of points at least. Yeah, you know, I don't think they'll dock him as many as you think, Wayne, because that horse maybe stopped kicking, but really had a lot of powerful drops in that front end, and they're going to reward that horse for that. All right, 81's the score to beat. Not quite there. It's an 80-point ride. He's still feeling good. You fits a beautiful thing. Yeah, that was an awesome ride. <laughs> There's your champion from go-around number two, Sean Culver, 81 points. We've got Jason Havens with an 80, tying up with Kurt Giovanini with an 80 as well. Now I'd like to say welcome to our lovely and talented third member of our broadcast team, Angie Burton, is standing by with our champion, Sean Culver. If the old saying is true, practice makes perfect, it works well in this situation. Sean Culver has been competing here at the circuit finals for 17 years. You're a veteran of the sport of rodeo. Is it hard? Does it, is it ever a hard thing getting out there riding a bucking horse? Uh, you, well, you know, as old as I'm getting, it gets a little harder every year. So, uh, yeah, I got a lot of uh, injuries from the past, and, you know, some of them, you know, they ain't never going to get any better. So, yeah, it, it gets a little hard as you get up there in age. Well, we don't want to say that you're old, but definitely experience. You think the experience helps? You had a great ride tonight. Thank you. Uh, I've had that horse uh, before and did a little better on him last time. I was 84 on him last time, and I was really tickled to have him again tonight. Well, you're sitting well on the average. We wish you luck and hope you'll have a fourth time going to the Dodge Circuit Finals. Thank you. Back to you. Here's your total on two, Rowdy Buckner with 160 points, but it's pretty tight. Yes, it is. You know, 15 points separating first through sixth. It's going to come down to the performance in the third go-round. Hey, what a nice guy. Sean Culver giving out a couple of signatures there. I like it. Big Boys Steer Wrestling coming up next. Welcome back to beautiful Redmond, Oregon. It's the Columbia River Circuit Finals, and it's the football players of rodeo, Bulldoggers, coming your way. Here's last night's round. The first one's out of the way in only six-tenths of a second. Separate Travis Trucio and Tony Curran all the way down in sixth. You need to know the rules. How about the rules of the run? Coming at you. Steer wrestling is the fastest event in rodeo. 
The objective of steer wrestling is to chase down a 600 pound steer and wrestle it to the ground using only leverage and strength as quickly as possible. The steer wrestler, also known as a bulldogger, starts his run at the back of the box to the left of the chute behind the barrier. In the box to the right of the chute is the hazer. The hazer's job is to keep the steer running in a straight line. When a steer wrestler is ready to go, he nods his head and the chute opens. The steer wrestler rides to the running steer and begins his transition from saddle to steer. The horse is trained to run past the steer as the cowboy dismounts. As the bulldogger reaches the steer's head, he must consider his speed, the ground conditions, and the size of the steer to maximize the leverage, momentum, and timing needed to throw the steer. The time starts when the barrier is released and ends when the steer has been thrown and all four legs point in the same direction. Beginning to end, a steer wrestling run lasts three to five seconds and is timed to a tenth of a second. But if the steer wrestler exits the box before the barrier is released, he's assessed a 10 second penalty. All right, buddy, this is where you shine. You're the world champ. Tell me about it. Tyler Bronkhorst, Burbank, Washington. He's the first man out in the bulldogging. Yeah, you know, he had a little trouble in the first round, 13-6 on one. Uh, he's just going to come back and try to win go-rounds and put a little money in his pocket. I can't believe you guys do this and stay healthy. Five, six hundred pound steers every day. Yeah, right there, you know he got a good start. Caught that steer's head, hooks his nose, makes a great run right there. It's going to be 4-4. Four, four. You know, he has a chance to place good in this go-round. You know, you can't even itch a good itch in 4.4 .4 seconds, <laughs> and these guys can fly out there on a horse and knock a steer over and get him down. You not really knock him down. That's a rule. You can't do that. No, no, but, you know, right there, Tyler does a great job. Four seconds, point four, you know, he'd be good. Here's a guy that can really handle cattle, and to me, it's kind of surprising because he's tall and he's stout, but he's not that big. I mean, you'll outweigh this guy by 50, 60 pounds. Yeah, you know, Trevor, 14-4 on his first one. You know, he's a he's a big guy. I mean, he's stout, he, he works out, he lifts weights, he's a strong kid. And right here, he gets a good start, catches the steer's head good, hooks his nose, and great run. You can see how that steer kind of hit on the leg a little right, bit. Right. You know, that's going to cost him a little time, but that was still a good run. This is a guy that's qualified for our Wrangler National Finals Rodeo, the Super Bowl of Rodeo, and you can see by the way he handles the cattle. I mean, this is what got him there, and that consistency will get him there again. Exactly. You Knowing his hazer does a great job. I believe that's Sid Britt doing the hazing for him. Great job keeping that steer running straight. That is so very important, and those guys are kind of the unsung heroes in this event right here. If you don't have a hazer that knows what he's doing, you're in big trouble. B.J. Truscio, Walla Walla, Washington. Now, here's a horseshoer. you got to be stout to do that. Yeah, and B.J.'s a good guy. You know he's a great horseshoer. Uh, I've ridden this horse before and won money on him. This is a pretty nice horse here. He was 5'7 on his first one. He has a chance at the aggregate right here. Gets off, kind of has that steer get a little wide on him, and, and you know, it doesn't catch his head very good. <laughs> How often do you try and reach up there with that foot and say, come on, get down, get over there? Oh, you know, you try to do anything to get him as fast, on their side as fast as you can. Right there, he does a good job. He, you can see he doesn't catch that steer's head very good. It kind of gets over behind him. When he hooks his nose, the steer wants to stand on that leg for a while. Yep. You know, he's going to come in right here with a 5 and 9. He's still all right for the aggregate, though. Put that together for the average. He's sitting okay. Yeah. Five and nine, good, smooth run. Teams of horses. Let's talk about them a little bit. If you own the right team, you can make a lot of money throughout the year renting them to other guys. That's something that Alexander Robertson might do. Bend Oregon. Yeah, Alex has a couple of horses he hauls around and, you know, rides them in different situations if he has to score a little more or, you know, has a run and steer. Right there, I think he might have broke the barrier and caught that steer, but look how much action that he put on that steer's head right there. He hooks his nose, steer hits flat. I believe he broke the barrier. He's going to be 3-6 uh, plus 10. Let's take another look at it, boy. I, I didn't see it. I mean, that's that's something you deal with every day, day in and day out, and so I'm sure you're watching for it. He's looking back. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he knew he broke it. Yeah. Right right yeah. there, you could see a good shot of it. Horse chest hitting the barrier too soon. You can see the little pigtail falling yeah. to the ground. I got gotcha. you. Don't do it. You know, that barrier is so critical in all of our timed events. Let's learn a little bit more about the barrier. In the three rodeo timed events, riders start their runs behind a barrier, a line stretched in front of the box. The barrier is used to give the calf or steer a predetermined head start called the score. Once the animal's chute is open, it runs into the arena, and when it reaches the score line, a breakaway loop on the animal triggers the release of the barrier in front of the competitor. If the cowboy leaves too early and breaks the barrier, 10 seconds is added to his time. You look up rodeo in the dictionary, you might see Kerr and Underline. What a great family. Hall of Famers from the Pendleton Roundup. 
Yeah, Tony Kern, you know, national finals qualifier in the steer wrestling. Great cowboy, rides a great horse. I've been on this mare before and, and won money. She just works outstanding. Right here, that steer's crawling up underneath her. You can see there to the left, but she does a good job getting out of the way. And Tony takes his time, gets that steer, you know, flipped over on his side. He's going to be a six and eight. You know, I've heard tell if you get the right kind of horses, a team like this can cost in excess of 100000 And when she was working, watch her bend back to her right to try and get him in position to get on the steer. Yeah, exactly. You know, and it's hard for a horse right there to uh, not want to come across you and cut you off in, in bulldogging terms, but, you know, that mare does a great job and gives Tony a chance to win some money. Unfortunately, on that steer, he's not going to, you know, win anything. Just a shade long, 6.8. Well, it's Tyler Bronkhorst. He's the one with the lead. Here's a great look at it, 4.4 seconds. we got lots more coming back. Steer wrestling when we return. comes a big stout guy from Adrian, Oregon, Carl Siders. Talk about one of the most consistent guys in our game. He qualifies for a lot of short rounds. Yeah, you know, and, and this is a tough circuit. You have to compete against Brad Gleason's, you know, Sean Greenfield's, Trevor Knowles, and these guys can go out and beat them, you know, on a, and on a daily basis. So this is a tough circuit. You know all these guys are capable of winning. You know it's a tough circuit when you look at that leaderboard, 4.4, the time to beat, gets a hold. What about it? You know, that was a great run. I, I didn't really like that steer as much as some of the other ones. You could see on the replay how good Carl gets his steer's head. Before his feet hit the ground, that steer's head's rocked across Carl's body. Right here, you can see it. See how that steer's head's come up across? Right. That was a good run. That steer just didn't take the fall. But I believe he broke the barrier. You know, it's yep. going to put him as a 14-5. Son of a gun. That 4-5 would have been fine, but in a, in a circuit like this, this is what you're talking about. You break the barrier, you might as well load your horse and go to the house on a one-go-around rodeo. Yep, exactly. Definitely. Travis Carnine, Echo, Oregon. You know, here's a guy that didn't really start rodeo until he was a freshman in college. That's not nor the norm in rodeo. Most rodeo kids start rodeo. Yeah, but he's a big, strong guy. and You can see how big he is. And watch how he takes a hold of this steer. See how fast he throws that steer? Wow. You know, he's big, strong, and you know he's, he's athletic. And that's the thing about steer wrestlers. That more athletic you are, you don't have to start at a young age. <laughs> 4.1, he takes over number one. Good job, Travis. You know, he used that steer's momentum. That was an awesome run. Great job, great job. The Knowles family, great analyst Butch Knowles. Here comes his son, Blake Knowles, Hepner, Oregon. 4.7 and go around number one. Uh, stay in the force. That's kind of the key here. Yeah, exactly. No, don't don't break a barrier. Just be smart back in there. Try to get as close to the barrier as you can without breaking it, obviously. But, you know, he has a great chance at the aggregate. This spring, just down the road in Redding, California, he had a great run, walked away with a pile of money down there. Uh, good horses. You always see these guys riding a great team. Yeah, you know, the McFarlands own this mare here, I believe. And you could do anything on this mare. You could head, heel. They say she's an awesome heel horse, too. But, you know, she works so good in the Bulldog, and the taste would have to put her in another event. Right, right. Great run right there. That steer kind of trapped Blake down a little bit, but he did a good job getting that steer's nose, but I believe he broke the barrier. Oh, man, what's up with the barrier? Did the barrier not get the memo today? We need a little help here. <laughs> yeah, that's going to make him 14-4. He had a good chance, but see how that steer's nose kind of got trapped by his leg? Mm -hmm. Blake did a good job picking it up and getting that steer to fall. I'll tell you what, it is always a pleasure and an honor to be in the same arena with Sean Greenfield, twice a national finalist, he placed in six out of ten rounds the last time he was there. Six foot four, 250 pounds. Yeah, he's a big guy, you know, and he's going to make another trip to Vegas this December. And he just bulldogs so well. You can see right here, he got a good start. Oh, a steer kind of <laughs> dropped his head and balled him up right there. Oh, he's lucky he didn't get hurt right there. That's a bad position to be in. Huh, I thought he had his hands on him, but he, he just didn't actually get a hold of him at all. No, in this replay, we might be able to see the steer drop his head just a little bit when Sean gets to him. Right? Oh, yeah. Right I there. That. I see that. Boy, that's a good way. See how his shoulder's trapped there? Uh -huh. That's a good way to dislocate his shoulder. I'm glad he came out of that all right. Ouch. Son of a gun. That's going to hurt on the aggregate. No score. I'm just glad that he's healthy and walks away from it. Here's a great guy that looks like he's 20 years old every time he runs, and he's probably been to the finals 10 times. Brad Gleason, Tushy, Washington. Yeah, you know, and, and I'm surprised Brad's not riding his little bay mare here. She works so good. But I think he's going to save her for the finals. He has a guy that's going to ride her there. and. Look Wham. right there, that's a good horse too, and he made a great run, good start, and just awesome run. That's why he was a world champion back in 1997. You look at how he does it, the kind of control he's got, he just stays in great physical condition, a great competitor. Exactly, you know, and Brad's 42 years old competing against these young kids, and you know, not an older guy, but he darn sure does his, does his job here, and you know, he looks 
30 years old. He does. He's a great guy to be around. I like him. Mark Boltinghouse, he's got it on his mind right now. 3.9. That's the new time to beat. That's getting pretty, pretty tough right there. What are you thinking about when you ride in the box and you know 3.9 is in the lead? You know, you just there's so many things running through your mind. He was good on his first one, 4.6. He's just going to try to stay in the average. You know, it depends on the steer. He gets a good start. Steer checks off a little bit, and he has trouble getting that steer's head caught. Looks like he kind of had to jump for him. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's like he was in the middle of a kick when that steer started letting off, and he had to come from the top ropes is what I like to call it. Right, right. You know, he's going to be five flat. You can see right here, gets off. It was just a little wide, and it's hard to control that steer's head when you got to leap at him like that. Well, that's what a five flat run looks like, and he was hoping for about a second off of that, but it didn't quite work. How about we take a look at a victory lap, Mr. Brad Gleason. It's not the first one nor the last one this guy's going to take. 3.9, that was a great, great run. Definitely, and then right behind them, Travis Carnine, Tyler Bronkers, Trevor Knowles, Mark Boltinghouse, and B.J. Perusia. Only a couple of seconds separate the top seven. That's going to make it real tough coming into tomorrow night for the third and final round. Down below, it's our champion, Brad Gleason with Angie Burton. Typically known as the big man's event in the sport of rodeo, steer wrestling. This is a description, Brad, that you fit very, very well. However, it doesn't come down to just strength. There's a lot of finesse. What else is involved with it? Well, I think, I think athleticism in general, you know, and you're, you're starting to see that more and more. As the rodeo starts to pay more, you see a lot more of the of a higher quality athlete. You know, in general, it used to be that there was uh, you know, one guy did all the events, and now that it's really event specific, and, and I think just a good quality athlete is is important in any of the events. You've been down the road. You've won a world championship. Does it get easier after doing it for 20 years? No, I, I think it gets harder uh, to get up in the morning and not use too much ibuprofen or something like that. But uh, no. It, you know, I think you just learn to deal with situations, with certain situations, maybe a little bit better. Uh, maybe not quite as nervous. You, it, it becomes more of a mental game than a physical game. Well, you're still showing them how it's done here. A great run tonight. Thank you. You're welcome. Back to you. The big story is total on two. And the big man from Tushy, Washington, Brad Gleason, he's got it all together, 8.9. Mark Boltinghouse, B.J. Trucio, and Tony Curran, they're all within striking distance tomorrow night. Coming up, it's the finesse event and rodeo. Tie down rope and it's coming your way as soon as we get back. Welcome back to the Columbia River Circuit Finals. The tie down roping, it has been electric. Let's take a look at last night's round. It was unbelievably fast. Three seconds divide the first through the sixth man. It's gonna come right down to the final round. Here's the rules of the run. You've got to follow them. The judges are watching. The objective of tie-down roping is to rope the calf and tie any three legs together as quickly as possible. The cowboy starts in the right box behind the barrier. The cowboy calls for his calf by nodding his head. The calf is given a predetermined head start. The cowboy must rope the calf, bring his horse to a stop, transition from horse to the ground, and run down the rope to flank the calf. The calf must be standing on all four legs before the cowboy can flank the calf. With the calf on the ground, the cowboy gathers up any three legs and ties them with a pig and string finished with a knot called the hooey. When the cowboy has completed the hooey, he raises both hands to indicate he's done. The cowboy then remounts his horse and rides toward the calf, putting slack in the rope. A 10 second penalty will be added to the time if the barrier is broken. A no time will result if the calf doesn't stay tied down for six seconds after the rope goes slack. There's also a time limit, which can vary from rodeo to rodeo. Ty Holly, Mount Vernon, Oregon. He was a no score in the first round. He's gonna be going for broke here in this round. Yeah, you know, he's a great athlete, great cowboy. He rides good horses. It wouldn't surprise me for him to be real fast here and have a chance to place in the go-round. All right, take a look at his groundwork. I want to point out the numbers up in the left-hand corner of your screen. That's the Hui timer. That's something brand new here from Horse TV Channel. That shows you the time from the time they actually lay their hands on the calf to the time they get their hands in the air. Really, that's where the money's won and lost. Yeah, exactly. And right there, Ty did a good job. You know, he'd have been a lot faster if that calf wouldn't have tried to kick him. He, he's going to come in with a 10 and 7. But uh, right there, that calf cost him a couple seconds by kicking. That's a good place to start the round out, but I don't know if it's going to stay in number one very long. we got a lot of talent right here in our tie-down roping. 10.7, nice and smooth, but 
the calf. Luck of the draw. You can see it in a bucking horse or a bull, but it's just as critical in our timed events. If you don't draw right, you don't win. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, in the timed events, you don't get a chance at a redraw. That's what you got. You don't, you know, if you get fouled, you might get another one. Brad Goodrich, Hermiston, Oregon. Here is an unbelievable talent. He's been here at the circuit finals 18 times. Yeah, and he's also a national finals qualifier you know, six times. Great cowboy, smart. He ropes smart. He, everything he does is smart in this business. Right here, he does a great job getting that calf roped, getting those legs. Had a little trouble gathering them up, but gets him tied up. Oh, misses his hooey. Oh, man. No, one, that... one little bobble. That's what's so unbelievable here in the world of rodeo. A second or two can cost you first all the way down to sixth or seventh or eighth, and that's just a bobble. That's all it was, a tiny little mistake. Yeah, exactly, and, you know, we'll get to see it here on the replay, but, you know, he's going to come in with 10 and 8. But, look, he ropes that calf good, holds his slack, getting down the rope very fast, flanks him fast. Right here he strings him, gathers his legs. You can see he has a little trouble with his string when he gathers him. Right. Two wraps, and here's his hooey, and he misses oh, his hooey. Oh, just missed it. Yep. Well, that proves it happens to the best of them any time. Exactly. Well, I'll tell you what, don't worry about it. We got another round tomorrow. Put a smile on, go get a cool drink, and we'll be back and do it again. How about Clay Schricker? Adrian Oregon. He was 11.3 in the first round. He's going to have to do something here to stay in that average. Down in the tens is what we're looking for. Yeah, exactly. You know, Clay, he won a little money in the first round. I believe he won fourth with his 11-3. Calf kind of running off to the left there, but Clay does a good job. Look how he holds his slack and keeps that calf on his feet. He's doing a good job getting his two wraps and a hooey right here. He's going to go to the lead, I believe. I've asked you this before, but you know, for the viewers that may have just tuned in today, I'm going to ask you again, how critical is the horse? 75, 80% of what happens in this arena probably lies on his back, yes? Yeah, definitely. You see how this horse is going to run in there? Calf goes left, that horse is really cowing to him, following him. See how he stops and Clay holds his slack? Now that horse is starting to get back so Clay can just run in there, flank that calf. Horse does a great job working and Clay does a great job tying up this calf. Even though he was about 6.4 on the hooey timer, that's still going to be a 10 flat run. That's something to hang your hat on for some money. Yeah, exactly. You know, and that's going to make him uh, right now number one in the average. So he has a good chance, hopefully, coming into the third go round. Three goes, and we'll add them all together. A lot of folks don't understand how it works. Here's a guy that you do not want to discount. Don't count your chickens before they hatch if Dick's going to rope behind you. Dick Hoffman, Hermiston, Oregon. 13 and 1 in the first. Uh, not blazing fast, but he's got a shot here. Good calf. Good job. Yeah, here he nods. Oh, you can see he's a little late at the barrier, and this calf's really running. He's going to throw a little rope out there and just to get him caught. Does a good job. Has to get that calf up. Now he's going to put his uh, string him, put his two wraps and his hooey on. All right, I'm going to have to watch a little bit closer. You said he was just a shade late coming out of the box? Yeah, it sure looked like it. You know, that horse, I don't know what happened if he didn't start that horse in time, but it looked like he ran that calf down there quite a ways. and. You know, that's just costing you time if you miss the barrier a little bit. We've talked about the ropes, all of the ropes that are hanging on these guys. Of course, the pig and string is in, is in his mouth right there. The jerk line is tucked in his belt. You saw that just kind of dragging on the ground right there. Pops out of his belt. He's got an extra pig and string tucked in on the left side of his belt right there. And then, of course, the long rope that they rope him with is about 30, 35 foot long. There's so many ropes there. But if it's your first time, you could get tangled up for an hour. Yeah, exactly. You know, a lot of these guys carry <laughs> knives just, just for that, uh, you know, fact they got so many ropes there, they don't want to get tangled up. If something happens, they'll have to cut them. And to save your horse, you know, <laughs> yeah. they get tangled up too. Here's a good look. Clay Schricker, 10 flat. More tie down roping coming up when we get back. Shane Erickson, Parabon, Oregon. Here's an all-around talent. He's a pickup man when he's not roping, and, uh, you know, he can do it all. I think he'd get in the barrel racing if the ladies would let him. <laughs> yeah, you know, he's 11-7 on his first one. Solid run. Hopefully he'll come back and do something like that again. His calf's not really running very hard right there. You know, he missed the barrier, but, you know, he didn't want to break out and had to help that calf back to his feet. Strung him, putting his wraps. Look how fast he was. Oop, Bobbled oop, his oop, hooey, oop, though. Oop, oop. Just a little bit of a bobble right there. Good draw. Good draw. You know, this pen, it kind of seems like we're in the porker pen here. They're kind of fat and soggy. Yeah, they are, you know, and, and Shane made a good run right there. Uh, see how this calf isn't running really hard? It's hard to set your run up right there, but right. Shane does a good job. If he could have kept that calf up on his feet, he would have been a lot faster. But uh, he strings him and puts his wraps on really fast and then has a little trouble with his hooey here. Just a little bit. However, the old hooey timer saying 4.8 still look pretty quick. Just a little bubble. Well, golly. Yeah. Cost just, him just a little bit of time there. Yeah, exactly. You know, he's going to come in with a 10-9. It's going to go good with his 11-7. and seven. 
Might let him place in the go-round, might not. We've had a lot of consistency here so far. You know, we've had a couple of no times, but most of these guys, whether it's last night or tonight, they're opens in the 10, 11s, and 12s, just right, staying right in there. Seth Hopper, Stanfield, Oregon. Here is a, a world-class contestant. He's finished in the top 30 in the world before. Yeah, exactly. You know, he placed in the first go-round, 10 and 4. Calf's running on a little bit, but look how Seth controls his, his horse right there. Has to help that calf to his feet. Big, soggy calves. Has a little trouble, but does a great job tying him up. That's a long ways down the arena to be that fast. And fast hands. Did he wrap him twice? It looked like he did. I couldn't tell he's going too fast. I was afraid maybe he's gambling there. If he only wrapped him once, it's kind of like uh, going to Vegas and throwing the dice. It's gambling. But I, I think he did. He wrapped him twice. See right there, that got a good start. His horse is really running in there. Seth takes a smart shot. The only thing I could see here is that calf kind of got a bad fall, and so Seth has to get him back up to his feet. The gentler you can handle them, I know I've said it already once, but the easier you are on them, the better off you are. If you get to them and they're standing, then you just have to throw them down. If they're already on the ground, you got to get them up. Nope, he did put one wrap and hook hey. on there. He took a chance, but you know it worked out. 11 and 2, it's going to go great with his 10 and 4 from yesterday. All right, do the math. We're going to throw a lot of numbers at you here. If you care about it, great. If you don't, just sit back, relax, and enjoy. Johnny Sloan, Ellensburg, Washington. 20.4. He had trouble last night. Hopefully he doesn't here. Yeah, you know, Johnny's. he's been in the circuit, competed against these kids for a while, and he does a great job right there. He took a chance at the barrier. It would be interesting to see if he broke out or not. Right there, uh, gets that calf flank. Calf's kind of kicking on him a little bit. He does a good job, puts a wrap mm -hmm. and a hooey on him. Still quick. Still quick. What, it, what are they doing? Yeah, he They're did. They're retying it, yep. He broke it. He's he going to be it. a 20 and 2. You know, he took a chance. He was 20.4 20, 20 on his first one, so you know he had to run at the barrier and take a chance, try to win something, Wayne. You know, mentally, these guys have got to be so in tune. Ten flat's the time to beat. He was a 10 and 2, but the old barrier just raises its ugly head and it's got to be tacked on. Yeah, exactly. You can see there's a little slack in the rope right there when that uh, when he flanks that calf, and that could be one reason why that calf started to kick. But horse got back, put a, got it tight, and uh, kept that calf from kicking more. Looks good. If the horse is working with you. That's why they uh, charge so much money for these horses. Finely tuned, highly trained. If he's working with you, he's going to help you by keeping a little bit of tension on that rope. Now, we've got rules in place as well. If it's too much tension, they go to dragging them, then they get fined. That's what those real, the rules are there for, to take care of our animals. You hurt them, they don't work. There goes our bread and butter. Paul Cope, Napa, Idaho. No score and go round number one. He's going for broke. Yeah, you know, Paul had a little tough luck with a no time. Coming back in here, this big black and white calf. Wow, look how soggy he is right there. Calf My gosh. Running around in the rope. Look at how that horse is trying to get back, though, and keep the slack out of the rope. He's trying. But he's just got into the fence and got in a bind. <laughs> oh, jeez. Where'd they get this calf? Boy, I don't know. He just come out of the feeder pen, it looks like, Wayne. Back away from the trough. <laughs> back away from the trough. I'll bet you that dude weighed 240. You know, that's a big calf, you know. <laughs> I'd hate to have to rope in, in that situation right there. You know, that calf was just running around on him and saying, I don't want to play today. And you know, it's just like dead weight. You need to go find your buddy, tell him, get on all fours, and try and just pick him up, 250 pounds of, of a, anything. That's a lot of weight. Ooh, he's straining. You, you know, and that horse does a good job working right there, and it's just one of those deals. He, Paul had a little trouble getting by that calf. Yeah, luck of the draw, just did not treat him too well here tonight. You can see, and he has a little trouble even with his uh, string in that calf. He misstrung him, has to go back and restring him to, to tie him up. Some days you just wonder, should I have gotten out of bed today? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Paul's going to come in with a 24.4. Obviously not going to win nothing in the go-round. Hopefully he come back in the third round and maybe have a chance to win something there. Stick around. Lots more to come. Madras, Oregon. You know, I'm expecting great things out of this guy this weekend. Last night he was 18.9. I had an opportunity to visit with him. He said, I'm going to straighten it up, fix it. Tonight's the night. Yeah, exactly. You know, he has to beat a 10 flat. With uh, the calf he has drawn, there's just no telling. He's got to get a good start and get it around his neck and, you know, be smooth. Luck of the draw. We've talked about it over and over. And that, that's a hard running little bugger, too. Yeah, he got a good start, though. Look at now he's got him on the ground, going to flank him. Boy, he's going to be fast right here. Look, 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 at his, look, look. Wow. Look how fast he tied that calf up. 3.87 <laughs> on the Huey timer. That is amazing right there. That, I think, is the fastest we've seen here this weekend on the Huey timer. Uh, you know, in order to do it that quickly, it's just a blur. I'm glad we've got the old slow-mo to take a look at it. His money was made on the ground tonight. Exactly. Look how that horse stopped and let him off his back. You know, that horse worked awesome right there. 
he's going to be a 9-2. You know, that is amazing. Great run, Tony. That's that's going to give him a chance to win the go-round. Oh, man, the crowd is going crazy here. 9-2. and two. That could hold. That could definitely hold. Brett Hale's going to have his hands full. This is going to set the bar pretty high for the rest of the field here today, 9-2. and two. Uh, Brett Hale, though, I think uh, fourth place in Ellensburg over Labor Day. That is as tough a competition as you can get right there. Home is Tannano, Washington, riding a great horse here tonight. Good luck, buddy. Yeah, you know, Ellensburg, the top of the top, go to, go to that rodeo. And, and for him to win that much, you know, he ropes good there. So hopefully he can get it done here. He kind of gets a funny jerk on that calf, gets him flanked, hopefully get him tied up fast. Two wraps and a hooey. There you go. When that calf come around like that, uh, it's going to make your time a little bit longer, but is it was it the way he threw the slack or is it just the way it happened? No, it, it, it's kind of the way he didn't handle his slack right there. I mean, he did a good job. Maybe that calf needed to get jerked a little bit, but right there he runs in there and ropes him. Then he just pitches that slack back at him. Uh, actually, you know, it didn't really affect him too much because by the time he got to that calf, he was, he was already up on his feet. Right. So, that was, you know, that wasn't a bad run right there. That's going to put him in with a 10 and 8. You know, no time in the first round. Right. He's going to have to come back and hopefully win something in the third round. All right, stay in there, guys. Brett Hale, 10.8. Nothing's going to take the place of the determination and try. Look at that guy's face. It's not over till it's over, and we've still got another round tomorrow night. Still a lot of money to be won and a lot of room to come back. Even if you're fast on two, a lot of times that'll get you in there. Yeah, exactly, exactly. All right, buddy. Jeff Coelho, Echo, Oregon. Talk about overcoming obstacles in your life. My <laughs> gosh, you got bit by a snake back in 2003, but he's back 100%. No problem. Everything's good. You know, I had talked to Jeff after, you know, the snake bite deal, and he said it, it was touch and go there for a while. He had to go get his neighbors and have somebody take him to the hospital. Right. Fortunately, he was, you know, recovered. He was 10-6 on his first one. Hopefully come back and do something. Got that calf rope good. Got him to his feet, stringing him, putting his wraps, two wraps, and a hooey. That calf's kind of pushing on him a little bit. And right there, when they push on you, you really want to make sure you get your wraps tight. If not, they'll be able to kick free before the six seconds. You know, this is something that a lot of the injuries in the world of rodeo, a groin pull, the muscle on the inside of your leg, can affect these guys so much. And we've seen them over and over again at the Wrangler National Finals or any of the big events, the finale-type events, try to work with a groin pull. And right here, when they're squeezing, right there, that's where it affects you. Yeah, exactly. You know, you have to use your groin to push those legs back in. Jeff makes a great run, 10 flat. It's going to tie him for second in the go-round right now, and it's going to move him up there in the average. All right, Tony Green is on top with a 9.2. Here comes Ty Sturza. He won the first go-around with a 10.1 second run. If he can do it again, just stay right in there. Here's a kid that rides Colts and goes to college, and uh, I think he just started shaving a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> Young and fresh. You know, he has to be 9-2 to go to the lead in the go-round. But he won the first round, so he's just going to make a solid run. See how he held his slack right there? Kind of kept that calf up on his feet a little bit. He's making a good run here. Two wraps and a hooey. That was a great run. You know, that calf <laughs> tried to get between his legs right yeah. there when he went to flank him, but he got by him good. That could be a bad position to be in. I've seen him where they run right in under your legs and pack you up and carry you off. Yeah, exactly. You know, that was a great run. He's going to come in with a 10-2. You know, he was 10-1 on his first one. Right here, you can see that horse is working good. Right there, that calf got between his legs, but he did a, did a good job uh, hustling back and you know, getting him flanked. Takes over the lead in the ever-important average with that run, 20.3 on two runs. Add him up, that's what we got. Good-looking shot at him. Good young talent. We're going to see a lot more of that kid in the future. Yeah, that was a great run, and you know he's uh, working his way to trying to get to Pocatello, and if he can tie his third one down good, he has a great chance. <laughs> Look at that grin. He's feeling good. <laughs> you bet. Well, you want to see what a champion looks like? There it is. Tony Green, 9.2. He's going to win the second go-around. That's, that's got to be a great feeling when you're coming around. Here's your leaderboard. 9.2, a couple of 10s, 10.2, 10.7, 10.8. .10 Angie Burton, let's welcome Tony Green, the winner in go-around number two. Fast hands plus a fast horse equaled the fastest time for Tony Green tonight. You went out there, made an awesome run. Your horse was working really well. The teamwork there between you and your horse has to be pretty important. Yeah, it's super. Uh, he's eight years old. I've been, I started him, and man, he's just super. He's awesome. What do you think, what are some of the other key factors in making a good calf roping run? Just scoring good, using your head, just trying to stay relaxed as you can, and don't get in a speed jam. If you're using your head, do you get a little nervous at all? 
I'm more nervous right now than I was over there. <laughs> well, we're glad that you came and talked to us tonight. Congratulations on a good run. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Back to you guys. It's the total on two in only 2.3 seconds, separating the first to the fifth man. Yeah, Ty Sturza, you know, he's 20.3. Jeff Quello, three tenths behind him, 20.6. Then we drop down 21.3, 21.6. 22.6 and 25.5. On behalf of Luke Branquino, Angie Burden, and everyone at the Horse Team.